Today on Shop Nation, I program and run my first CNC part. What's up you guys, I'm Travis, this is Shop Nation, and this is my new shop. I'm kidding, I wish. This is actually where I work. It's called Reynolds Machinery in Dayton, Ohio. Reynolds sells CNC equipment as well as MarkForge 3D printers, which is my connection from where I was before. And today I'm gonna program and run my first CNC part. So while I was actually at training at Herco, I was introduced to how easy their control system is to use. So it gave me the idea that I wanna program my first part. Now I am a complete dummy when it comes to programming and certainly running a piece of CNC equipment, but the way that Herco does their controls makes it approachable even for a dummy like me. So I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time in this video going over specifically how to run or program a CNC machine, but at a very high level, all CNC machines essentially run on G-code. G-code is a language that they all use to navigate while they're going about their business. Now there's basically three ways in which you can generate G-code. The first way is the way they used to do it, which was program G-code directly. This is writing line by line exactly what you want the machine to do. Now this might be pretty good for simple parts, but as soon as the parts get complex, manually writing G-code becomes downright impossible. So the next option is using a post-processor like a CAD CAM package. This is a piece of software that you import your part and you can go over exactly what you want the machine to do, which then generates a G-code that you load into the machine. The third way is called conversational control and that's control you do at the machine itself. And that's really what Herco is known for. If you're in the machining world, you've likely have heard of Herco and they're known for their conversational controls and just their controls in general. So for that reason, I'm gonna program my part entirely at the conversational level at the control. Now in order to do that, I've modeled up a pretty simple part in Fusion 360 and generated a drawing. Now I'm only going to be working from the drawing itself to program my part using conversational control. Now the machine that we're going to be using is actually a five axis machine. Now if you're not familiar with that, it means you can do really complex parts or multi-operation parts with one setup. So here's an example of a five axis part which would be really hard to do in a three axis machine but is really easy on that one. Now the part that I've designed is pretty simple. We're only gonna use three of the five axes, but this just happened to be the machine that's set up to cut aluminum. Now because I'm an absolute dummy and that's a machine that I don't wanna break, I'm gonna use the help of one of our expert application engineers to make sure that I'm not gonna screw anything up. Now one of the first things we do is set up our block of aluminum in the vise and then using the probe, find a center point which we can work off of. Next we built each block of the conversational control for each operation that we wanna do for our part. One thing that makes this control really cool is how big the screens are and the fact that there's two of them. On one screen you can see a simulation of the cut that you're actually programming. This helps you check to make sure that things aren't going wrong, you're not going to break a tool or the machine itself. So all in all it took about two hours to set up the program and the tooling to run the part. So with everything programmed and the application engineer's sign of approval, we can actually hit start. So for me, this was a great learning opportunity to kind of see the process by which you would utilize a piece of CNC equipment to cut out a final part. So even though it's a computer numerical controlled piece of equipment, you still have to think about how the part's actually made. Now my particular part was two ops, meaning that we fixtured it one way, did one series of operations, flipped the part over, and then finished machining the backside. And what's great about Herco and their control is you can see the whole thing as it's going. Now I'm not paid or endorsed by Herco to do this. They didn't tell me to make this video. I just saw this as a way to get my feet wet in CNC machining. So with that first operation done, we can now flip the part over and run the program for the back half.
So after a little bit of deburring, I get my final part, and I think it turned out pretty cool. Now, this isn't a complex part by any stretch, but it was an experiment for me to understand conversational control with the Herco control system specifically. Kind of made this a belt buckle, I guess. So anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. I saw this as an opportunity for me to learn something specifically about CNC machining, which has always been interesting to me. And it turns out that with the Herco control specifically, it's actually really easy. Now, I don't wanna think that this gives me too much confidence because the application engineer definitely helped me a lot, but I do think I could do some simple commands. Let me know down in the comments if you thought this video was interesting, if it was a waste of your time. If it was, I don't know why you're still here. I appreciate you guys for watching and we will get back into my actual shop and start building some more shop projects. See you guys on the next project and as always, continue to pursue shop greatness.